Thanks for having me in. So hello everyone, my name is Sia Redding. I'm an artist and educator here in the Bay Area. I feel very honored to be speaking with you today and I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, today I'll be talking with you about a curriculum that I built last semester in my after school fashion design class. And it focuses on building a student-driven curriculum by making the class into a design team and how we can increase student engagement through creating student agency within a real-world assignment. And um, before I begin, I'd like to introduce the purpose of my work. When I'm not teaching, I'm a sustainable fashion and textile designer. And during my first year of college, I lived and worked in a garment factory in India for a summer. And ever since then, my perspective of clothing and production like totally switched around. And ever since, I've been like an active artist, designer, focusing on sustainable issues. And I've also fully immersed myself in natural dye practices. I've been a colorist and dyer for designers like Erica Tanov um, for the past eight years. And um, then four years ago, I was hired by the students of Youth Art Exchange as their first ever fashion design instructor. Youth Art Exchange is a nonprofit in the Excelsior District of San Francisco, and we offer free after-school art classes to high schoolers all over the city. Um, our classes range from like photography and printmaking, architecture, um, but because the classes are free, our students are actively choosing to be there. It's a beautiful collaborative community between the students and the teachers, and our program is mostly run by the students and their interests. So within my class, I have students who are interested in building a fashion portfolio to potentially apply to art and design colleges, um, but mostly my students sign up to be a part of my class because they want like a real world fashion design experience. Now every semester is different, but primarily in the past I've focused on one designer being the student and making a garment for their client being that same student. Um, and then at the end of the semester we have a big fashion show of their elaborate work. Um, but because I've worked in a commercial garment production, I know that this real world one designer to one client model is not realistic. This never happens. It usually takes a team to design, to design something that's actually important. Um, now, I've always felt that by teaching my students how to sew their own clothes, I'm somehow altering the way that they think about products and the way that they shop. But I want them to know that by knowing how to sew your own clothes, you can also um, create a difference in the fashion industry. And I want them to see that, and I want them to see how a design team works. So I started showing my students a documentary called True Cost that not only educates the viewer of the realities of clothing production, but also educates the viewer of the importance of the consumer within the industry. For example, Stella McCartney, the Lord and Savior, um, explains that without consumers, even she wouldn't have a job. It's, us, it's up to us to buy things. And, it's up to, and if we don't like something, then we don't have to buy into it. We don't have to buy into anything. They also highlight in the film, and this has been published by a lot of news outlets like CNBC and Forbes, that the target audience for the fast fashion industry are young people between the ages of 12 and 24. So I asked my students, if this vicious market is targeting you, and if jobs of these thousands of people are in your hands, then why don't you tell them what you want? Instead of buying into what they tell you to want, why not show them what you actually need? So we went out to change the fashion industry and decided that an object that all high schoolers connect with is a good backpack. I connected my class to a um, local business called Beta Brand, and Beta Brand allows for anyone to submit a design, and then through crowdfunding and through group voting, your um, product can actually be commercially produced and put out into the public. We also met with their head of their think tank program, Liz, who explained to the team that what the process is like to design a bag what a pitch looks like, and examples of good bags that they've done in the past. And the best advice that she gave to my students was to look at things that are already in the world and critique it, and how would it better suit you? Because our class is filled with students from different areas all over the city, I asked the students to interview their peers and bring back to the classroom what students like in a backpack and what they don't. And we began building ideas as a group of this new bag that could potentially be made. We used sketches, models, and conversations between the students to create what they thought would better the lives of a San Francisco high school student. And we turned the pitch into beta brand. Oh, wait. And then the West Coast Rucksack was born. That's what it is. And most all teens commented that they wanted a sleeker backpack that could hold everything they needed without hitting people on the muni bus. <laughs> so the students created a Converse shoe-like inspired elastic drawstrings on the sides 
so that it can flatten the bag. There's also an insulated compartment on the bottom for your lunch and a water bottle compartment on the inside as well. Um, we, so we turned in the pitch to Bader brand and immediately received hundreds of votes. My students were so excited for the opportunity to their bag, for their bag to be something real. But it was once the project was over that I began to realize how this glimpse into positive action design allowed my students to see themselves as designers for positive change. Bernard here says, um, realizing about the, fa the, about the fashion industry and how um, creators like H&M are using sweatshops, he says, I, got, I really got intrigued into joining the fashion industry to change that. Or Khan, um, this, collaboration, this collaboration of many types of students allowed for students to see that no matter what school they go to, students can connect through personal needs and aesthetics. He says, I learned a lot of my peers really have good taste in this class. It's fun seeing different high school kids with different fashion, because I feel like every high school has a different style with different clothes. And um, lastly, another fun one. And by implementing collaboration in the classroom, the students see how by sharing their diversity of perspectives, that their ideas can create an, one entirely new product. And Emmy says, when someone has an idea, everyone else opens up to it, and then they combine it with all their ideas. So it's like a ton of different ideas put together into one big awesome idea. <laughs> and, um, and this is when she was buying fabric. Very shiny, always shiny. And I'm honored to say that our bag did receive enough votes by the general public and is in the process of currently making its way into crowdfunding. Um, and within, within this project, I saw a change within my students of, act of actively listening to each other, opening themselves to new ideas, and acknowledging that yes, they as high schoolers have a voice, and that together they can make a change in the fashion industry. Thank you.